channel. Today we're going to be talking about anxiety and depression and how to cope with it better at home. So stay tuned. So the first thing when it comes to anxiety and depression, you want to learn breathing techniques. This has helped me so much. One of my favorite breathing techniques is probably the square. So I will explain to you guys the square and this is what I seriously do whenever I have like a panic attack or something. Um, sometimes, you know, you just need some help with yourself. It's normal. But basically the square is that you make a square with your finger or you can draw a square or like in your head. The square. So basically you're going to breathe in, you're going to carry it to the next one. You're going to breathe out, you're going to carry it to the next one. So yeah, that's one of my breathing techniques. Um, there's so many online you guys can find, so I'll let you guys do that research because it's important that you know how to control your breathing better when it's not controllable. <clears throat> the second thing that helps me, um, especially with panic attacks, is spotting things in a room. So you spot different things, so whether it's a table, whether it's um, a frame, whether it's your lamp, just in your, in your head. <laughs> Don't look crazy, like start saying it out loud, but in your head, point out to yourself everything that's in the room to get your mind distracted. It really does help. The third thing, this is for depression, um, daily gratitude. This I did for probably about a month and I will start it up again. I don't know why I stopped. I think I just, I became really sick um, the last past month so I wasn't really able to do much, but but yeah, um, daily gratitude. What I mean by that is basically you tell yourself or you write it down. Uh, I personally wrote them down and you write down three things you're thankful for or grateful for every single day. And it comes easier with time. At first, it's very hard to like come up with things all the time but eventually you start to get used to it and you start fit finding things that you wouldn't necessarily think about as being thankful for so that's fun the fourth thing that has really helped me in both anxiety and depression is yoga and meditation i have to get back into yoga i've gained a few pounds <laughs> but um when i was doing yoga often and when I was meditating often I actually felt a lot better so definitely try that out uh, there's so many videos you can go to on YouTube um, you know you can just type in like meditation um, course or yoga course free or whatever and you'll find so many things so definitely try that out the fifth thing that helps me a lot is to create a playlist. Now this is a playlist for whenever you're anxious or depressed and you know you can turn to this playlist whenever um, that stuff happens. So whenever you're in the middle of a panic attack or something, you know that you can go to this playlist. Um, you want to pick songs that are very happy, calm, quiet, um, any songs like that you want to add to this playlist because that will help you to calm down. <clears throat> Number six is fresh air. I can't tell you enough how much this has helped me, especially in the past. Going outside when you're anxious or depressed, like just going for a walk outdoors alone. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to the store or whatever when you're anxious. But just a walk alone, maybe in the woods or the park or whatever, it is so good for for you and your mental health. And I promise you that that's gonna help you a lot. Even if you do just a walk every morning or every night or every afternoon or whatever, or you just get out there, you know, it's really good for you. 
the seventh thing is aroma diffuser. Now I personally have one and guys, ooh, I love it. Uh, my parents got it for me for my birthday actually that just passed and it has worked wonders. I've had eucalyptus, lavender oil, I've had a bunch of different essential oils, uh, frankincense, and it's, it literally, it smells amazing and it feels amazing, especially when you are doing yoga or meditating. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. The eighth thing is stones and rocks. Stones and rocks, I've been collecting for years since I was a kid, literally. Um, just holding them is enough to like feel better. Like the rocks that I've actually bought in myself, um, I have this one. So it's, um, it's, it's rose quartz, this one. I don't know if you guys can see the little. Yeah, it's a nice chunk. And then I have this one. It's a amethyst. And then this one is very special to me. This one is from my mammy. Um, she got this, I believe it was in... think Morocco anyways somewhere over there uh, she went on a trip to Europe so yeah that's pretty crazy like I don't know if you guys can really see that but that's amazing and then I have one that Jesse actually got me and it's from the Dominican when we went to our trip it's really nice and when you put it underwater it's way more than that like it's just so beautiful when you put it underwater um i also have like three different boxes like actual boxes filled with just either crystals stones or rocks that i have picked up um while exploring uh the past year but literally like i have found so many it is insane and i think that will help you a lot is a clean environment I can't stress this enough because I used to be one of those people I was really really messy at one point like a, a while ago um, when I was like first becoming a teenager I was just so messy everything was scattered everywhere and once I actually started cleaning up the my room and my house and stuff like that I actually felt a lot less anxious so just be mindful of keeping your environment clean and tidy at all times because it will make you anxious if you're surrounded by junk basically <laughs> the 10th thing is to give yourself space so what I mean by that is when you're having an anxiety attack or you're going through depression and stuff just take a step back for yourself for like just half a day at least pamper yourself take care of yourself do things that you're supposed to get done don't pay attention to anything else around you just focus on yourself give yourself space because you'll need it the 11th thing is to turn off your phone when you are depressed or anxious, turn off your phone. Only rely on actual conversations with people in front of you or around you. Or, you know, you can go see someone or someone can go see you. But actually interacting online and making it so that you go through your timelines and looking at your notifications, that can make you very anxious and depressed. Um, the 12th thing is to drink water and eat better. And I know, oh, everybody says that in like every video, but literally the only time I actually feel good is when I'm drinking a lot of water and when I'm eating healthier. So 
uh, I think it's just like you need to say it at this point. Even even though people have said it over and over again to literally everyone on YouTube. Um, just do it. Like, you know. The 13th thing, and this is a matter of opinion, but it's to remove caffeine and processed sugars in foods. I have removed caffeine even though I love coffee. I literally, I would wake up every morning to a coffee. I'd have a coffee either in the afternoon or at night as well. This can make your anxiety go through the roof. And I learned that the hard way. But sugar and processed foods, whenever you're having an anxiety attack, panic attack, whatever, just don't eat sugar or processed foods. Like literally just don't. Eat raw, healthy, just be mindful. You know, you can treat yourself obviously, everyone treats themselves, but to do that while you're already having anxiety or depression, it's not a good mix. The 14th thing is to make yourself an anxiety emergency kit. This can be filled with things that you personally um, feel better looking at or feel better touching. You know, you can put a blanket in there, you can put um, a couple of your favorite movies, some songs, some for a letter to yourself. Like You can fill that thing with so many different things, so many tricks. Um, you can put your rocks or stones in it, you know? Like anything that helps with your anxiety, just put into this kit that you can just grab whenever the time comes up. The last thing, and this is an important one, it's to reach out to loved ones so that they can reassure you. A lot of the times when you're anxious, it's because you believe something that is not actually happening. So what I mean by that is your body is like in emergency mode, but everything around you is perfectly fine, but your body is sending signals to itself that it's literally in danger. So just being reassured by loved ones, um, obviously, you know, you should talk to your loved ones already if they don't know that you have this disorder because it is very important to know so that they can reassure you and not possibly make it worse or continue it. But yeah, sometimes, you know, you just need reassurance just for someone to say, everything's gonna be okay, there's nothing wrong here. You're completely fine. You know, um, you just need a little help, that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed 15 ways of how to help Hope with your anxiety and depression. Uh, this was a really nice video for me to film because I have struggled with BPD, anxiety, depression, all that fun stuff uh, throughout my whole life. So it is a very important subject to me and I can't wait to bring up mental health again to you guys because it's important. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.